uh, generally in any entity type uh, we are going to have lots of entities for example if you take any entity type like uh, employee you are going to have many employees right now the question arises how can we distinguish one employee among all these employees right just to answer that just to have a uniqueness constraint what we are doing is uh, let us say we have this entity type and entity type is employee okay and in this employee entity type we are going to have many employees right now we have to identify each one uniquely which means we are going to have some information about every employee right so every information is going to be attributes so just to identify one of them uniquely we are going to have some special attributes which are called as key attributes for example employee number if you take it if you look at employee number employee number is going to be unique or maybe if you take a student student id is going to be unique there has to be something in the entity the attribute at least some attribute which is going to uniquely identify uh, you know that particular entity so that that uh, uniqueness this is also called as uniqueness constraint and along with other constraints like structural constraints this uniqueness constraint is going to be implemented using the key attributes now how do we decide which one is going to be the key attribute again from the requirement analysis whenever you talk to the users they are going to say that see we have these many employees and out of all these employees we are going to give them some identity cards and every identity card is going to uniquely have a number which is going to identify them so depending on that we will set one of the attribute as the key attribute now once we fix that attribute then what happens is whenever you try to insert any new element we will always check that the new element which is going to be inserted which means the new entity should always have a different value in that uh, you know key attribute right so for example at, you know for this employee maybe you can have an attribute employee id right sometimes what happens is more than one attribute uh, might qualify to become a you know key attribute for example if you have a car it will have one is registration number and other is engine number engine number is given by the manufacturer to identify that engine uniquely and every car is going to get a unique engine number and similarly registration number registration number is given by the government and it is also going to be unique right and sometimes we might have you know more than one attribute which is going to be qualified as a key attribute in that case as the schema designer as the designer database designer you have the liberty to choose any one of them to go for the you know key attribute sometimes what happens is we might not have any key attribute at all that is where we can we, we face some problems some entities might not have any key attribute for example let us say there is an employee and his family the family of you know his dependents so all these dependents are going to depend on this employee now in that case when these many people are depending on him we cannot give employee id to all these dependents also right for example you have a family of five members and in your database or in in your company database they are all going to save uh, you know they are going to save the information about your dependents also now they cannot give you the give the employee ids to the dependents also right then that particular employee the dependent set see this what i mean to say is let us say there is employee set employee entity set okay and now there is dependents okay now the problem is there will be at least one attribute in the employee especially that employee id which is going to uniquely identify uh, no one one entity in this uh, employee en employee type right but then here in this dependent type we might not have any such number what we have is generally name age and relationship let us say name is a right and age is 25 and relationship is let us say son or something like this son of an employee right and at some other point there might be some name a which is same as this and there might be some person who is of exactly same age and who is also a son of some employee right now these two entities cannot be distinguished uniquely that is the problem so just to just to you know come overcome such problems uh, so whenever any entity is not having primary sorry this key attribute then such an entity is called as weak entity weak entity okay and if a if a entity is having 
prime in this key attribute then such an entity is called as strong entity okay and just to overcome this problem of uniqueness what what the uh, rule we apply is every every weak entity has to be related to a strong entity through a relationship okay and what should this relationship be it is called as identifying relationship so it is a special type of relationship which is used for identifying uh, a weak entity right so this is not the normal relationship which we have been uh, talking about other relationships are not necessary they are not mandatory they are optional but here this relationship is uh, you know mandatory without this relationship you know there cannot be any any entity existing here it is called as existence right so for every dependent here for every dependent here there has to be an employee here there has to be an employee here but for an employee here he might not have any dependents that is not the you know real world scenario but then there there might be a case you know a, a person might not be having any family right so that is not really the case but then you know there might you can even allow some employees to not have any dependents are you understanding this okay don't think how it is possible let's assume that it is possible okay so what i'm trying to say is if there is an employee sorry dependent then definitely there will be an employee on whom he is depending on otherwise he will never enter our database of the company right and in case you know there might be some employee for whom there may be no uh, dependent at all now how do we represent it see this is called as strong entity any entity which is having primary attribute is called as strong entity and any entity which is not having primary uh, this uh, key attribute is called as weak entity right so what is key attribute it is used to identify entity uniquely that is unique uniqueness constraint now how to represent this uh, you know in terms of er diagram is we know that we are going to use a rectangular box in order to represent an entity type and now generally we use uh, you know this diamond in order to represent a relationship and since it is an identifying relationship we are going to use double diamond like this so every identifying relationship we are going to use this double diamond right and every weak entity we are going to use this double uh, rectangle okay now this is the strong entity like employee for example this is the weak entity like dependent and this is the identifying relationship like depends on okay like depends or uh, depends on which means this particular you know dependent depends on this particular employee what about the participation the participation is always it should hold true always always the participation of weak entity in identifying relationship has to be total very important point okay what i'm trying to say is whatever you think about here see what whoever is dependent he should always be participating in a relationship which means he should always depend on someone here right so remember this always the participation of weak entity in a identifying relationship is total which means if you if you watch it like this right if this is the weak entity then every every entity should have some participation in the relationship right okay and what about the other one the strong entity need not be uh, you know uh, total that is what i'm saying so because they really don't need them but they really don't need them they are dependents they have to depend on this right and there are various names for this also now this entity is called as owning entity of this one or this entity is said to be owned by this one owned owned means uh, you understood this right owned the actual meaning of own which means without this it cannot exist right so if you want to add anyone into this they should definitely depend on this why is this so is the uh, the only way we could actually identify them is by taking the key attribute from here and adding to this see now dependent is going to have name right just assume that dependent is going to have name and maybe he is going to have some age and maybe he is going to have some relation 
right relation with some employee now along with these if we add the key attribute of this uh, strong entity let us say employee is going to have employee id uh, now using all these we can identify you know one entity in this weak entity uniquely so sometimes what happens is we may not be able to identify a like this we may not be able to identify an entity uniquely by using one attribute then what we do is we take more than one attribute to uniquely identify it right so which means we can combine some of the attributes to make it a composite attribute and maybe we can use that uh, to identify it for example let's say we have this uh, car right and car is going to have one is uh, let us say state and other is registration number within that state okay generally if you look at your uh, you know vehicle numbers here in india you will see something like this ka04 right 1234 something like this what does it mean ka means the state is ka maybe 04 means maybe bangalore and 1234 means the registration now what happens is either this state or this uh, registration number within this state might not be able to identify a car uniquely isn't it but then when i combine these two which means if i write this entire number i'll be able to uniquely identify it sometimes what happens is if simple if uh, an an attribute individually is not able to act as a key attribute or if it is not able to uniquely identify uh, a entity then what we try to do is we try to add many attributes to make it a composite attribute and we call that composite attribute itself as the key attribute that can happen but then you should see that whatever composite attribute you are trying to form should be as minimal as possible which means you know if this this itself is going to act as a composite attribute which is going to be the key attribute then don't add anything to this right so whenever you try to add many attributes in order to make a key attribute in order to uniquely identify an entity see that it is as minimal as possible which means uh, you know if one or let us say if these two attributes are going to be act as a you know key attribute then don't try to add one more attribute to this and again say that it is also a key attribute okay when you are trying to combine them see that we need only as as minimal as required okay similarly what we are what we are actually doing in this case is in case of weak entities we are going to take some of the attributes from the weak entities and to this weak entity we are going to add you know some attributes from the strong entity and and we call the entire combination as the key for the weak entity got it but but then uh, one thing is for sure if 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 an entity is weak entity then its participation is total but then every total participation might not mean that it is weak entity okay i'll tell you what i mean by that see i'm saying that if an entity is weak entity then it should definitely be in total participation in the identifying relationship like this right which means without a, a dependency on the strong entity there will not exist any weak entity okay but then if there is total participation it need not mean that you know uh, the entity is uh, weak so example is let us say there is employee and works for works for relationship there is employee entity and works for relationship and employee works for a department right and we know that every employee will work definitely for one department therefore the participation of employee is total but then it should not you should not derive that since completely they are depending on this which means totally they are participating in the relationship employee must be you know weak no employee will be strong right uh, see actually without depending on a department no employee should exist that is for sure what what is the constraint we already said that every employee should work for at least one department therefore if an employee is not working for some department he will never exist that is fine but then it doesn't make employee a weak entity got it so 
total participation doesn't ma ma make a entity weak but then if an entity is weak it will definitely participate totally that is what the meaning is right it is very important point people will get generally confused in classrooms what i mean to say is uh, see if it is weak entity it has to have total participation right but if you are having a total participation it doesn't it doesn't necessarily mean that the entity is weak okay i'll give you one more example it it might help you in the understanding this concept let us say a person is having a license card okay that you you have the license cards right uh, the driving license dl now that uh, driving license will never exist without a person isn't it if there is a driving license there will definitely be a person right okay alive or dead that is secondary if there is a di driving license there will definitely be a person but it doesn't make that driving license a weak entity okay what i mean to say is let us say it is license card entity that you are dl right and now it is person entity right and this is hold right right holding so license card is being held by some person right therefore what about the participation you can say that it is totally participating and it is partially participating which means there might be some people who doesn't have driving license but then if there is a license card if there is a dl definitely there will be a person who is going to hold it isn't it so what does it make you know, the participation of uh, you know license card in this relationship is total right but then you should not think that this license card that particular entity is weak because license card is going to have a unique number on it let us say license number that license number itself is going to you know identify this uh, uniquely therefore license card is definitely going to have a key attribute right and that key attribute is license number so since license card is going to have license number right and it is a, it is going to act as a key attribute for this it is also a strong entity so by participation don't derive the you know uh, either it is weak or strong so either weak or strong that depends on whether it is having a key attribute or not if it has a key attribute strong not no key attribute weak then what we do identifying relationship complete total participation then we take the you know primary key uh, that key attribute okay sorry that primary key we should not call it here we take the key attribute from the strong entity and add it to the attributes of the weak entity and we call that composite complete composite attribute as you know this uh, key for that particular uh, weak entity got it therefore weak entity participation in identifying relationship is total and in every total relationship total participation doesn't say that the entity is uh, weak got it so this is how the weak entities are going to work okay